everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then welcome, I really hope you enjoy your first video. So today's video is going to be another video in my financial savings related series and I asked you guys over on my Instagram which is at hazelwoodx, I'll pop it on the screen here, to provide me with topics that you would love for me to cover over on my YouTube channel. So that is exactly what I'm doing today. Quite a few of you asked me to do a video all about credit scores, what can impact your score, how to improve your credit score and anything related to credit scores in general. So I thought I'd bring you a video all about what I know and how to help you guys out. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, I would love for you to join me on there as you can get involved in future financial related videos and you can share with me what you would love to see next on my channel. So I really hope you guys find this video helpful and let's get straight on into it. So why is it important to maintain a good credit score? Well, there's lots and lots of different things your credit score is gonna impact and it's gonna be all sorts of things such as if you're going to get accepted for a loan or not, if you're going to get accepted for credit cards or store cards, it also has a massive, massive impact on the interest rate you're going to be charged. So you may get accepted for a credit card or store card, but if you have a bad credit score, it's likely that your interest rate is going to be really, really high. So the amount of money it's costing you to borrow that debt is going to cost you far more if you have a bad credit score. And the same goes for mortgages as well. If you have a poor credit score, it's likely the interest rate offered to you is going to be higher because because the number of lenders available to you is going to dramatically be less if you have a bad credit score and the lower the number of lenders available to lend to you is going to likely result in the lenders only offering ridiculously sky high interest rates. So the first step is obviously to find out what your credit score is. So there's lots and lots of services online free of charge to find out what your credit score is. And one of them would be Experian. So with a website like that, you can sign up to a free trial, but then you will be charged after a certain point. Or you can have a basic view, which is free, but it's gonna limit you on what you can see. So with the free version of Experian, it pretty much just tells you your credit score. It won't give you the ins and outs of exactly what is hurting your credit score. Whereas I found a really, really helpful app, which is called ClearScore. And ClearScore is totally free of charge to use. I'm sure there's probably versions that do cost money, but the version that I've got is free of charge and it's actually really, really detailed. So it gives me a report every single month on my credit score, tells me if my score has gone up or down and it tells me what is hurting my credit score as well. So it's really, really helpful because you need to understand what is actually hurting your credit score so that you can fix it. Because if you don't know what's giving you the bad score, how on earth can you improve your credit score? So that is a real key first step is to sign up to one of these websites. You don't have to pay anything, but make sure to sign up so you understand what is impacting that score of yours. And a lot of these websites as well will give you tips on what you can do. So, you know, you don't just have to use my tips, you can actually use the website tips as well as it's gonna guide you based on your particular circumstances to what you need to do for your own situation to better your credit score. So to start with, I'm gonna talk about some random facts that actually hurt your credit score that you may not be aware of because a lot of these points may have impacted me in the past or they're just things that I've read online which I didn't actually realize impacted credit scores at all. So you might find this helpful to learn. It might be something that you're doing wrong that you could improve straight away. So let's talk through them. So the first thing that I didn't realize impacted credit scores, which did impact mine, is being registered on the electoral roll. Hopefully I've said that right. Um, so I moved house and I didn't actually register on there for a little bit of time and that was really negatively impacting my score. So yeah, when I moved, I didn't actually register on the roll for a little bit of time. A little bit naughty, I know, but I just totally forgot to be honest with you. And it was really having quite an impact on my credit score. So yeah, I registered I went online, I typed in register to the electoral roll in, in my area and within a couple of weeks the register was updated and my score went straight back up to a really, really good number. So that is really something that can have quite a significant impact. So I would suggest making sure you are registered to boost your score that a little bit further. Now, cancelling all credit and store cards all at the same time. So I thought that if you set out to pay off all your outstanding credit and store cards and then you decided to subsequently cancel the cards afterwards by phoning the company up and saying, I want to shut this account down. I thought that would actually have a really good impact on your credit score because I thought, yes, it's showing the lenders that you don't want to you know, have that debt with any company, that's great. Actually, because you're closing the accounts so close together, that actually has a negative impact on your credit score, which was quite news to me. I didn't realize that had an impact at all, but it certainly does. And the reason why it can look bad to lenders is because it reduces the age of your credit history because you might not have a card that was, say, running for five years because that's now closed. They may not look back at five years worth of information on that particular card because that's shut now. That's kind of 
done and dusted if you like. But it's important actually to keep these cards open if they have a nil balance that's absolutely great but leave them open at the nil balance because for example if you have a credit card with a limit of say £2,000 and you haven't used any of the credit on that because you've paid it off in full and the card is still open that you haven't utilised any of the available debt to you that is actually looked at positively so it's actually looked at in your favour which again I didn't think it would be. If you do have a large number of cards open though that you would like to gradually shut down that is fine but perhaps look at shutting one down every six months or so if you do it too close together it will have a bad impact on your credit score so something else that impacts you quite badly is maxing out your credit cards or utilizing a high percentage of the available credit limit so again something I didn't realize I thought if you had a credit card and you use the full credit limit let's say two thousand pounds again for an example I didn't think that would look, be looked at necessarily badly, especially if you were paying it each month, but that's not actually the case. Lenders like to see that you have available credit, but you're not utilizing it all. And the number that they particularly like to see is around 25% of your available credit being used or less. So that's typically the guideline that they recommend that you stay within to allow your credit score to stay at a nice high number. If you are utilizing all of the available credit, then it can negatively impact your credit score as it's showing that as soon as you have available credit, you're gonna use it all up, which doesn't actually work in your favor at all. So of course, the way around that is to just make provision to start repaying these debts down gradually so that you can try and get within that 25% mark. Another thing that impacts you is co-signing application forms. So it might be that you've co-signed with your partner, maybe you've helped them get a phone contract or a car finance. As soon as you co-sign with someone else, you are liable for that debt as much as that person is because you're basically the guarantor. And this is gonna impact the amount of money you can borrow in your own name. Another thing is moving house a lot as well. So if you have really short periods of time at an address, that can also have a bad impact on your credit score. So if you've just moved, your credit score might dip for a little period of time. And then once you've lived there for a little bit of time, it's gonna gradually start to creep back up again. So I'm now gonna go on to things that impact your credit score as well. You know, things that you guys might already know, but I just thought I'd run through them as well just to kind of recap on them if you're not already aware. So the first off is gonna be applying for credit. So if you're applying for multiple things, your credit score is gonna drop. So let me give you an example. I went to a store recently and they had an offer on whereby you would sign up to a store card and then you'll get 20% off your purchase. So I thought to myself, great, I'm gonna sign up to that store card and then I'm going to pay it back off within the month. So I'm not incurring any interest at all. And I'm just taking advantage of the 20% off available. Guess what that did? That negatively impacted my credit score. Because when I logged in to check my score, it showed that I had just applied for credit. So unfortunately, applying for credit does hurt your credit score, even if you pay it back straight away. Especially if you're applying for multiple things very, very close together. It's it's good to try and keep big, big distances apart when applying for things. So if you apply for something, try your very best to wait six months until you apply for something else. I know it can be hard and it's easier said than done, but the more you apply for things, the worse your score's gonna get and the harder it is gonna be for you to get accepted with good preferential interest rates on the next thing you sign up for. So late payments, I'm sure you guys know this will impact your credit score, but it's so, so important to make sure you make any credit payments back on the date they are due. Even if you are one day late, this is gonna hurt your credit score, so you really need to make sure that you do not ever, ever miss a payment. This really does have quite a drastic impact on your credit file, so yeah, make sure that all payments are set up, set your direct debits up, make sure there is always sufficient funds in your bank account to cover that direct debit. Make sure that even if there isn't, your bank will fund it for you, because certain banks do, certain don't. Mine personally do. For example, if I have you know, if I'm short by a couple of hundred pounds, my bank will fund it for me, but they'll text me and say, you need to transfer the money over and I'll be charged penalties. But ultimately make sure your bank account will fund these sort of events if it does happen, or make sure you always have enough in your bank account so that your payments always go through on the date they're meant to. And my biggest tip of advice is to make sure all your direct debits are on the same date. And for me, I set my direct debits for the day after I get paid. So when I get paid, everything that has to come out that I'm legally bound to pay comes out the day after I'm paid and I know what I'm left with for the rest of the month. So that is my number one tip for making sure you stick to your payments. Another thing which has a really bad impact is just missing the payment completely. So if you completely miss a month's payment on something, this is gonna have a really bad impact on your credit file. And unfortunately, missing a payment does sit there for quite some time and it's, and it's gonna be a lot harder to build back up. So 
you know, if you are in that position where you've already missed a payment, I suggest you make sure you do not miss another payment again. So really do make sure to make every single payment on time going forward to show lenders that you had one small glitch, but you're not going to do it again. And don't expect for things to get better overnight. It may take you six months. It may take you a year. It may even take you a few years to make sure your credit file is looking perfect again. But just make sure that if you have done any of these things that I've mentioned earlier in the video, to make sure you don't do them again because if you repeatedly do the same thing over and over again, you're just making yourself look really, really untrustworthy to a lender. And if they can see that you've done this to other lenders in the past and you've missed payments multiple, multiple times, they're really gonna be unlikely to wanna lend to you. So make sure there is just a one-off and you make it happen next time and you do not miss another payment. Because obviously the more months that go by where you're making a payment and you haven't defaulted on a payment, it's gonna show a lender that you can be trusted, that you are making the payments month on month on month, that you are consistent with this and they're going to start to trust you again. If there are any errors on your credit file which can also have a negative impact then you can contact the lender directly to get this resolved. So for example my car finance or my last car I voluntarily terminated the car and there was a little bit of a dispute at the end of that regarding how much was owed when I voluntarily terminated the car because I handed the car back and there wasn't meant to be any debt outstanding, but they were arguing that there was a few hundred pounds. So being the little complainer that I am, I took it to Financial Ombudsman to complain about it. And that is actually still ongoing nearly a year later because it takes a really long time for these things to go through. But instead of putting the payment on hold, which was promised to me, so I did actually speak to the lender and said, look, are you gonna make sure this doesn't impact my credit file whilst we're disputing this? They promised me it would not have a negative impact on my credit file. However, they actually marked my credit file for around a six month period every single month saying that I had missed a payment and that just wasn't true. So when I logged into my credit file to see my score was about 200 out of 999, I was horrified because I've always had a relatively good score. So obviously I was very, very confused and worried about this. So I looked at the breakdown, instantly found out that it was them that was impacting my credit score. So I then contacted them, sent screenshots and then proved to them in previous emails that they'd confirmed it wouldn't impact my score, if that makes sense and ask them to resolve it and that updated within a week or so they do say allow a few weeks for changes like this to be updated but just make sure you get onto it as soon as possible any errors contact that lender and make sure that they reverse it for you and they can do it so don't take no for an answer if there is an error then they have to rectify their mistake so now there is a tip at the end of this video guys because obviously i've spoken about all the things that can impact your credit score in little ways that you can kind of resolve it but if you are in a situation now where you have got a really bad score obviously this video is to help you guys who may just have a little error in your credit score that you need to rectify but I know some of you out there will be watching this who've got a really bad score and you have missed payments, you have done things wrong in the past and you really want to make sure that you make things better going forward. And there is something that you can do to help and I've been doing a little bit of research online for you and it's called a credit building card. So if you have a really, really poor credit history and you really drastically want to make this better, obviously you can't just go out there and get any sort of credit card and start making things right. You're gonna to have to work, start from the bottom and work your way up. And a credit building card basically offers a small loan but it does offer a very high interest unfortunately. But if you clear the card each month, then typically you won't be charged any interest. So do your research online as to what lender you wish to use. Make sure you're not gonna be incurring any interest penalties. And if you're not, then you can use this card every single month to rebuild your credit score. Because with credit cards, they're actually a great way of building a good credit profile. For example, if you're young and you're 18 years old and you've never had debt before, your credit score is probably gonna be quite poor and you too would struggle to get a big loan. And the reason isn't because you've done anything wrong, it's just because you haven't got a credit history and you haven't got a credit profile. So actually getting credit cards can help to build a positive credit score as long as you repay it every single month on time. So that is something that you can look into doing if you've got a bad credit score and you just and you dramatically want to make things right quickly, do look into these credit building cards and see if you can get one for you. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. I know that it's not a miracle cure. I can't give you one of those, unfortunately. If your credit is in a bad position, there is no overnight fix. And I know that's really frustrating to hear and it's not what you'd want to hear, but Everything in life takes time and we have to just look at the current situation we're in and try and be grateful for what we have got right now and just think, right, I've got a goal. That is what I want to achieve. Look at what you can do every single month, positive steps to 
get towards that goal. And if it takes a few years, it takes a few years. It's not the end of the world. If it means you can't buy your dream house for a few more years because you can't get that mortgage, it doesn't matter. Enjoy the current situation you're living in right now if you can. Try and make the best of a bad situation and just be assured that you will get there. If you have a positive mindset, you put hard work into this and you really believe in yourself and you do everything in your power to achieve your goals, I believe in you and I know you can do it too. So please try and be at peace, I guess, with your current situation. Don't kick yourself if you have have got yourself into a little bit of a tricky uh, you know credit card situation or anything like that just look at the situation you're in and think right my ideal my situation now isn't ideal but it's okay I'm gonna make positive steps to improve it so I really hope this video helped any of you out who maybe needed a little bit of advice or tips and thank you so much for watching guys as I said before follow me on Instagram and let me know of any other topics that you'd like to see on my channel and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video so thank you guys and I'll see you next time Thank you.